You are listening to the This Life Podcast with Dr. Drew Pinsky and me, Mike Catherwood. That's right. We're doing it this time. So check it out. Thanks for listening. You live. You live indeed. This is another special This Life Podcast. You live episode with Mike Catherwood, my co-host from Midday Live on KBC 790 AM. Boom. You can listen to us Monday through Friday there, noon to three. He's also, that's available at kbc.com. Also, this uh, podcast available on iTunes, as is our uh, Midday Live podcast. Mm-hmm. And the Dr. Drew and Adam and Dr. Drew podcast. Please check that all out. You can get it all at drdrew.com. And we are proudly supported by the Real F- RefillWise, RefillWise.com, Alliant University, Integrity Card. You'll hear more about them after the breaks. And you can find all the information at drdrew.com. We appreciate your support and the sponsors who support us. And uh, we check them out very carefully before we include them in our little family here. Click on the banners at doctor.com. Get acquainted with the products. Tell a friend, please, about these podcasts if you like them. We appreciate that very much. And so here we are yet again. Yes, sir. Doing another You Live podcast by popular demand. Lots of good calls uh, on uh, one of our previous podcasts. Let me just say real quick, too, that Dave Navarro is like a delight. He's a real... Always has been. Delight to be around. Yeah, always has been. Good guy. Uh, But... Yeah, I've also seen him when he's in his disease too, and like, oh, I can imagine. like many people when they're in it, they're not not so great. But uh, when he's sober, it's like th- that's that's the part people go. How can you work with people like like this? That there, it, you get that on the other side. Yeah. Here's then, another thing. Let me just say this: that God is a mean man because everyone knows the person and the guys and gals who slather on every you know nine hundred dollar an ounce cream on their face and then get surgery <laughs> and eat nothing but sprouts and kale and bullshit so that they can look like everyone else. Dave Navarro spent uh, two decades destroying <laughs> his body. He looks 25 years old. I told you the and devil. perfect. He does. Yeah. The, the devil is in shape with him. That's yes. our crack producer, my wife Susan. And uh, we are welcoming the program Amber Portwood. She is part of the original 16 and pregnant OG girls, Team Mom OG. <laughs> Uh, Hi. You can also see her at Marriage Boot Camp, where a lot of crap went down, I guess, Amber. <laughs> good, good to see you. Uh, good to I, see you. Uh, I, are you. Are you in Indiana? Where are you now? I am back home, thank God. I was gone for a month straight, pretty much, doing um, Family Boot Camp, Reality Edition. And before that, I think I had five days off, and I was in New York for six days Oof. for um, the uh, Teen Mom OG reunion and things like that so so wait a minute i saw you a- i saw you before the boot camp at the og reunion right yeah yeah, yeah. and then you went to boot camp and we talked a little bit on the phone you were freaked out scared to death going in how was it um oh my god without trying to be horrible it was horrible oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. it was um i've never done a show like that you know i did teen mom og and i did uh the team Mom franchise for 10 years now so Being on a show like that was completely different, and I just, not to go against them, but it just felt really fake to me, Um, very uh, not genuine in Mm. some ways, and I wanted to leave, I think, the first few days, Um, not because it was too hard for me. I mean, every drill, I mean, I did it like it was nothing, but um, it just, you know, you have producers and directors coming coming up to you and, like, trying to talk in your ear to start things, and that's... You know, Dr. Drew, that's not me. Yeah. Um, you know, you've worked with me for a while now. Um, and I just kept telling them, listen, don't ever come to me again, trying to get me to start things with other people on the show because I'm not going to do it. It's, um, I, it. Look, it's important, I think, that you bring that up. And I, again, I don't want to crap on this product or this show. I, I don't know these people. But their their only responsibility whether they call themselves a reality show or it's a sitcom or it's CNN News – their only the responsibility sitcom. is to make entertainment. No, it's I disagree. Not to... uh, I disagree. Well, I disagree. Well, if they present the themselves, doctors yeah. were amazing. Good. Okay. Good. Well, okay. No, no. But my, my point is, is like I, I, I can totally understand where Amber's coming from in that if you're yeah. going to sign on to do something that is quote unquote reality, yeah, they're at the when they sit down to do their job, the producers, yeah, they look yes. at you as as a as a cast member, right, and right. that's really unfair to a, a lot talent. of people, you know. Yeah. Do you, do you, and, and I think I told you. I told it was. You. Go ahead, Amber. Go ahead. No, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I feel like that there's so many different types of reality shows that um, it's very hard. It's very confusing for people who watch them to understand which ones are real. Um, and I can only speak for myself, um, not even the whole franchise, but I can speak for me that what you see of. Um, 
and on in my story on Teen Mom is real. Something just happened. Oh God. Something just happened to your computer. <laughs> oh, somebody's calling you. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's trying to call. I'm sorry. That's all right. But, Save um, to borrow. <laughs> and, and by the way, the people on Facebook, you can call and talk to us and Amber at 323-649-8268, 323-649-8268, and we will take your calls. And so just call on in. But I um, love my fans. They better call in. I think they will. You can tweet tweet it out. I'm sure they will. Then. Man, they definitely love did. you. They definitely love you. Well, uh, Drew tweeted out that you were going to be talking to us today, and it was like, my Twitter feed just absolutely exploded with like the Aww. the Portwood lovers and Amber Amber fan number sixty nine or whatever. It was unbelievable. I mean, like, that, I, yeah, it was really it was really quite in, uh, heartwarming. But I mean, getting back to, to be the, fair, Amber had her detractors early on. She used to take a lot of crap on I social did. media. Yeah, I remember yeah. when you, I, had, I, remember I actually when you had to give yeah. my um, my my Facebook and my MySpace back in the day over to MTV. I went to the FBI because I was actually getting death threats and oh. things like that. <laughs> So today is a lot different, I can say. I always wonder, are people that ill or is that someone who just doesn't understand the 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 weight of their of their actions by giving someone a death threat? Like someone they do not like from I Team think Mom, they're, they're Ill. gonna Yeah. I mean you I wonder. Think Ill. Yeah. You want I mean it's, I really it's do so because intense. most people just get angry and they'll talk crap and and things like that, the usual like kind of trolls, but um yeah, it's it's crazy, honestly, with the, some of the things that I've been through. But um, you know, today is better. Have you worked or made any development in being able to deal with that? Because I can imagine, no matter oh, yeah. how much you say "quote unquote," you get used to it. That can't be easy to deal with. No, saying um, I think um, I think going through what I've been through so far in life without bringing everything up, um, I just don't give a shit anymore. Excuse my language. I don't give a crap anymore. Well, let's bring, let's bring as up. Much, as much as I can. I'm still human, though. So sure. I do care sometimes. P- um, let's bring up a little bit about the stuff you've been through, if you don't mind. Because people forget how intense your your arc, your story, a story is almost not, not a strong enough word, your life has been. Yeah. I, yeah, tell people that story about when you asked the judge to put you in prison and then what, what, what that experience was like. Oh, oh my gosh. Um, The emotions, for one, were something I don't think anybody could ever understand. Um, You know, I I was on fentanyl patches, and I was eating them and chewing on them. Man. You know, I... In in the courtroom. Went to the bathroom. In in the courtroom. um, Because they can't detect it unless... I mean, it was just sitting in my cheek. Like, 90% of the time, they can't detect it unless they lab it, um, which they barely do in a drug court. Yep. Um, and I almost died a, a couple of times. I know I did. I know I did. I don't know how I woke up. I promise. Um, and I just went to, uh, I had one of my court dates for a uh, drug court. I went in and I looked at the judge and I said, um, I can't do this anymore. I'm still using pretty much. And he looked at me and said, do you understand how much time you have? Because it was five years. I said, yes, of course I understand, but I either die, not see my child, um, or live a horrible life, um, staying an addict, or I actually go and get some help because I had already been to rehab and everything else and nothing was working. I was way too stubborn as an addict at that point um, that I really needed to put myself in a position to where I couldn't get out of, so... That's and, what I did. And and I, I actually went and visited her in, uh, in the Indiana prison system, and they yeah. had a they had a women's inpatient treatment program. It was a three year program, as I recall, and she ended up being a peer counselor in the program. Yeah, really? I, I, yeah. I graduated yeah. and um, became head facilitator and put all. I was teaching classes. I taught anger management. Which is not going to show on Family Bootcamp, by the way. <laughs> or or, or I, do, um, I do recall a reunion where it sort of it sort of broke down a little bit. But you Some know, of also, those skills. I, well, it's the way that I am, and this is going to be me forever. And I and I, I get that now is that um, I can only handle so much uh, hatred towards me, or uh, can I say? I can't say that word. Crap talking. Yeah. Yeah. No. I and, and yeah. frankly, to be very honest with you, and I'm not just saying this just to blow smoke. 
you receive a level of hatred and and a level of crap uh, of crap talking that is far that far outweighs what anyone should receive. I mean, I don't think the human brain was designed to get you know what teen moms get uh, on, on Twitter media. on on yeah. social media. It's not. It's just you have a far far unhe- a much a disproportionate amount of unhealthy. Uh, crap shot your way every day, yeah. and and any way that you can figure out a way to deal with it is is frankly impressive. Mm. Right. It's just you know it's like everybody says you just have to keep putting your finger on that block. You know, just keep blocking them, and um, it's it's hard though because you know when you go out, even where I live, you know I get judged mm. because I live in an upscale kind of neighborhood. Now I do, and they they even kind of judge me here, and it's it's sad because. I just want to live my life and move forward and not be known as, which is going to be hard, but um, not be known as just the girl that went to prison or was the addict because I'm really trying my hardest to move forward in my life and become, um, you know, a good mother figure for my child and, and which I have. Let's, let's, you know? let's take some calls, Amber. Here we've got stuff coming okay. in now. It's again, the number is uh, 323 six four nine eight two six eight those of you out on YouTube or Facebook this is Heather Heather go ahead hi Amber I just want to first tell you, you've done such an awesome job you know in your recovery it's amazing and I was concerned about whether or not you are truly done with Matt because from a viewer's opinion you absolutely should be and how you're planning to get his name off of half of the deed and if you've actually come to a total amount by going back through the bank records to see actually how much he was able to, you know, take out of your account without you knowing. Okay, Heather, I'm going to put you, right. on, I'm going to put you on hold, Heather, and let you uh, listen to Amber's response. And Amber, That's I don't know. That's a heavy, you, heavy yeah, it's a big, stuff. Yeah, at least, let me, two things I want to say. One is answer. That's a fan. <laughs> yeah, that's a fan, and answer to the extent you can or feel comfortable, number one. And then number two, I'm, number two, you, uh, some of the stuff came up on the reunion. And I don't know if they aired that, all the stuff about the gambling and everything else. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, Matt right now is actually in Las Vegas. He's living there. I, um, at this point of time, I, we are talking, but we're not talking in a sense to where we're getting back together. Um, we argue too much. I, we are not living together. We haven't lived together in over probably now almost two months. Um, I broke up with him, uh, before we went on family boot camp. I personally am just trying to better myself in a situation that really uh, put me down in a situation that I just kind of lost myself, uh, my independence as a woman, as a person, um, because I was too focused on Matt. So I'm trying to find me first before I even think about getting another relationship general roles with Matt. Um, but we still talk, of course, because love doesn't just shut off like that. Um, that's not how it works. Um, I just want him to be happy. And, um, and with, when it comes to the money situation, honestly, I, I'm not trying to go after him for anything because I just want everything to be cordial and done. If that's the way it's going to be, he is a man. If he makes money and he wants to, uh, pay me back, then that's something on him. But, um, as the type of woman I am, I have no, um, I'd like to have my money back, but I'm good, you know. <laughs> I'd like him to give it back. Um, but I'm, he, I'm okay, though. I'm doing, I'm doing good myself, and ever, that's ever figure all that really matters. How many, you know, I, at one of the reunions, I met a couple of his kids, and they seemed great. But did we, did we ever square how many kids he actually has? Um, altogether five. So that's what, uh, that was the number. That was the number that we've sort of known all along. So there's no there's no lying yes. around that at least. Okay. Because because I would, well I I uh-oh. guess. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean you never listen. I I till the end I just that's the number that was um, everybody settled that pretty much even the media. Hmm. Um. So I just honestly you get to a point where you're just done hearing things and you just you start to not care in a relationship. And I think that's what started happening with me and him as I started to not care anymore about the relationship like um, you should. Mm, right. I kind of put a wall up. So, 
I wouldn't get hurt again, pretty much. That's rough. We have to take a little break, Amber, so hold on here. Okay. We are we are going to be back with Amber Portwood from Team Mom OG. We're going to take a little break. Be right back. To hold on there, our callers. We will get to you. Again, the number is 323-649-8268. See you in a second. Help months ago, I introduced you to RefaWise. It's a prescription saving card you can get right now on your phone for free. And I was thrilled to hear many of you did so. You signed up. And that some of you have saved as much as $150 at every pharmacy visit. We heard these stories and we appreciate them. Now, if you already have your RefillWise card on your phone, remember you can't save unless you use it. You've got to use the card on your phone. Just open the message, show it to your pharmacist next time you get a prescription filled. It is as easy as that. Just say, what can you do with this? Because it you know they'll give you they'll decide for you what's the least expensive alternative if you haven't done it yet grab your phone and text drew to the number 22822 immediately your refill wise card will be sent to your screen it's really fast just that's the word drew drw to a number 22822 and if you have an insurance you might actually save more with the refill wise card and if you don't need the card today chances are you know someone who's struggling with the high cost of medication aren't we all now Help them out by telling them about the Refill Wise card. We appreciate that. Also excited to say that for every Refill Wise user, every new user, they will donate a dollar to the Prostate Cancer Foundation. That is a charity that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, and I, I want you to learn more about Refill Wise. You can see if your medication could be covered. Just visit refillwise.com. Let's go ahead. Just let's do it now. Start saving right now. Text Drew. That is Drew to the number two two eight two two. Message and data rates may apply. Well, one of the great parts about working in recovery is seeing former patients successfully move on. And I've had patients that have come up to me years later and uh, shake my hand and say, you know, sometimes people are kicked out of treatment. And uh, many of these folks move on to become mental health professionals themselves. And, of course, the field of psychology is vast. The need for competent practitioners is huge. If you're considering this rewarding career, I urge you to consider the California School of Professional Psychology at Alliant University. Now, I've known them for a long time at Alliant University. I've spoken at their past events. It was founded in 1969. It's boasts an alumni network of nearly 50,000 people worldwide. And Alliant has fostered many of today's mental health pioneers, authors, and advocates. CSPP at Alliant University hosts both on-ground and online programs in business psychology, marriage and family therapy, clinical counseling. They also offer APA-accredited doctoral programs in clinical psychology that can allow for specialization in child psychology, clinical forensic psychology, and integrated psychology. And the faculty is crazy. It's made up of, of, of leaders and historical figures like Abraham Maslow, Carl Rogers, Victor Frankl, some of the true fathers of modern psychology. For more information, and I worked alongside of these students as well, by the way, in the clinical setting as well as having lectured at the institution. So for more on the California School of Professional Psychology, CSPP, at Alliant, click the Alliant banner on our website or visit Alliant, A-L-L-I-A-N-T dot E-D-U, Alliant dot E-D-U. And we're back. And Mike, you said John Laterman, our uh, super fan. Yep, I asked through. for some. I asked for some gay imagery of you and I, and he came through. Okay, I'm now opening it up. Did he put it on? Uh, yeah, that's no, pretty, no. He that's, was. He was. That does not go up. That's he pretty was crazy. respectful enough to keep that private between. Okay, he, you're he not going to put that up either, right? Well, I mean, in my masturbatory, you know, no, but I mean, I am, you're not put on social media or anything. No, I'm just going to okay, keep it right that's, there. That's my, pretty insane. Stuff. Going in my spank bank, unless right. Amber wants me Wait, to send it to my wife. Text so directly to her. Send it to her. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, send it to Susan. Um, Amber Portwood, of course, is our guest. The number is three two three six four nine eight two six eight. Um, you know, we, John Lee, one, one, one uh, sort of, if he's still listening on on uh, social media on Facebook or YouTube. Um, when I said he didn't sound like what I thought he was going to sound like, what I meant to say was I felt bad about it because I didn't. It wasn't about his voice. He sounded so young. Well, and, and I thought also, he was a guy in his forties. Nice. Yeah, know you know, nice. I mean, the guy who makes constantly sits around <laughs> making photoshopped images of Drew and I doing horrible things. You'd think he'd be like, "Hey, <laughs> what's up?" Eh. He's always like, "Hey, hi guys, how are you?" <laughs> I just love the show. So, Amber, let's. Uh, there's somebody who wants to call in and ask you questions about, uh, I guess, being a teen mom. He has a daughter. Let's talk to Lance. Uh, get to it lance okay uh yeah go ahead yeah hello is this amber hi hon hello hello how are you i'm doing good how are you uh i'm not too good i also have a teen daughter who is pregnant and about to have a baby Mm. okay and what's your question and i don't know how did how how did that work out for you? Are you happy that you had a baby as a teen, or would you have rather um, waited? 
Well, of course, um, as a teenager at that time, I would have rather waited. Um, I wasn't ready. But, um, you know, I feel like now, I'm 27 now. I've been doing this for about 10 years, um, watching my daughter grow. Um, I'm in a different position I can't believe than I was I can't believe she's 10. a long time ago. I know, oh right? My God. How is she? <laughs> um, Everything good? She's doing amazing. Yeah, I bet. She's doing so good. I mean, she just straight A's. I mean, amazing little girl, beautiful, just blonde hair, blue eyes. I mean, but uh, to get back to the question, uh, what what exactly do you need to know? I mean, it's it's hard. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, probably one of the hardest things she's ever done in her life. Mm. How old is she? Well, I'm ve- I'm very concerned with her. She's only eighteen. She's 18, okay, and she well, had sex with these two black guys, and she's not sure who the daddy is, and I'm concerned. Um, well, I right, mean, so. the only thing you that know, you guys can... Who, who's going who's to pay for these kids? Am I going to have well, to do that? Well, well, she's 18, like you said. I, I moved out when I was 17. The, it's, it's hard because there's a lot of single mothers out there, but she's got to find out who the father is by a DNA test, of course. Yeah. Um, and move forward with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, it, that's another situation. I've never been through a situation like that, but that's exactly what she needs to do when she has her child is make sure that she has a DNA test, make sure uh, who the father is. And if they want to be in their life, which they should, um, then that would be great. However, she, I think she's old enough to um, take care of herself. I moved out when I was 16, so I, I can't, I was 18, though, when I had Leah. I was 17 when I got pregnant, 18 when I had Leah. And I worked way up until I was six months pregnant, you know. So it's just she's got to work hard, and I hope she knows that. I hope she knows she's about to go through a journey. Yeah, um, I mean, the journey the journey it's just, not easy yeah, in the, any way. But as a parent, as a parent, I believe soulfully, um, um, wholeheartedly, that you should help as much as you can, but don't be um, – What's the word I'm looking en- for, Doctor en- Drew? Enabling. En- enabler. Yeah. Enabling her. Let her grow. Let her learn from her mistakes. Uh, but just make sure she's on the right track as a parent. Um, and that's what I would do for my daughter if she was ever in a situation like that. Um, and as a when I was pregnant, I didn't really have that guidance. So I really hope that you um, you will help her, you know, guide her in the right direction and and help her out. Um, with uh, certain things. Let's talk a little bit about teen pregnancy. We, you know, obviously on the shows, we always review the statistics about who's going to finish college and what the probability of another kid is and all this kind of stuff. There's lots of and probability of, of difficulty with poverty. All these things are bad Absolutely. statistically. And I used to always ask you guys to go, well, do you know how babies are made? What were you thinking? This kind of stuff. In, in retrospect, what do you think a kid is thinking when they get a woman, a young woman, 16-year-old is thinking – who knows how to use a condom and knows how babies are made sort of oh, lets, yeah. lets that happen. What, what are they thinking? Do you think? I think this is helpful. Honestly, for parents. Go ahead. Honestly. Um, when you're a teenager, Dr. Drew, you know, your hormones are raging. <laughs> so, um, any teenager is going to find a place or somewhere to where they can do something if they want to. That's just the way it is. Even I mean, butthole. parents think they, it's, it's, it's just the way that it is. I'm sorry, but you have to make sure like what I'm going to do with Leah is you have to make sure that you're always on them, always making sure that, uh, you know what they're doing at all times. And it's not, it's not a parent's fault if their child gets pregnant, because believe me, they're going to do it one way or the other. It's crazy. Um, but if a situation happens, you've, you've got to help as much as you can without enabling in a way. Um, and a lot of, uh, girls that are pregnant, uh, teen, uh, teenagers that are pregnant don't get help from their parents. Some of them get kicked out. They have nowhere to go. Um, they get in positions like this. And um, I really feel that the parents should not turn their backs on them and right. make sure that they're there 100%, honestly. But, 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 but 100%, but not enable, not take over the care no, of the No, don't enable, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. And I could repeat that a million yeah. times. Don't enable, but always make sure that they're on the right track. Yes. And that's all so. I can really say. Our number is 323 Let them live their life. 8268. We're going to go out to Dana. I, uh, just real quick. Yeah. It would be similar to, uh, obviously not the same situation, but there's similarities to 
when you have a kid that's a drug addict or a kid. Yes, that's, very much. That, you know, much I, so. I, was I don't that. know what I do if my parents shamed me or turned their back on me. Yeah, when, and uh, right. did, did they pay for me to? To go get more drugs? Did they take me in and, and, and feed me while I went and got high? Of course not. But they definitely knew that they were emotionally supporting me through it when I needed it most, and, and that was invaluable, you know? And to be fair, you broke them in early. Yeah, that's... I broke them in early. <laughs> so, Mike, look but right that's there. A, that's great advice. Dana, are you there? Yes. Hey. Can you hear me? We got you. Hey, okay, my question is for Amber, even to say for everything you said just now on them comments, because that's, that's great. My comment for you, you, Amber, um, is I just want you to know that you have a lot of haters on social media and this and that, and they're dogging you and that. And I just want you to know that we don't really know exactly what's going on in your relationship, but we feel that love is blind. And when we see red flag after red flag after red flag, there's a lot of people that love you for you and care about you. And that we just want you to know know that that. not all of us are haters. We just want you to be sure what you're doing, think about what you're doing, and make sure he's the one. And Dana, let let me say, hang on, I'm going to help you both. Dana, hold on. Dana, one second. Is one of the things, and Amber, you'll back me up on this, that people. And you've sort of alluded to it a little bit there, Dana, which is you're watching a reality show. You're watching a few minutes a week of of Amber's life. You really don't get the full spectrum of what's going on there. And so don't don't mistake, you know, when somebody brings a crew and camera in and you get a few minutes, you get it. You're getting a piece of honesty. Getting the most entertaining nuggets. You're getting a little piece of her life, but 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 (laughs) but to think you really understand what's going on with her, that that's that's a little bit of a mistake. I, I. I, I have, you know, I want... Well, Go ahead. It, well, my, my thing I'd is, like to if think he's though, doing something on TV in front of everybody, what well, is behind closed doors? I, here's my only here's thing what is, it is. I want her to be happy. Not, okay. Not, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Not to interrupt you. Not to interrupt you, sweetheart. Because um, all I got to say to you is sending love. Obviously, you're, you've been... Um, I hear what you're saying because I there's been so many people that have... Uh, had my back and really have been um, cautious about things. And I swear I have the best fans on this franchise. Be rude. Um, they're amazing. They are very, um, they're very involved in my life. Um, however, you know, the one thing that I can say is the moments that were good between me and Matt were never showed uh, really on the, on the show. However, um, you could see all the red flags, like you were saying, and you've got to understand love is blind. And I definitely was blinded by love with him, and but, I, I still do love him. But that's what scares um, them, but, Amber. That's what scares your fans that that, that they're seeing they're not blinded. They see the red flags. They're afraid you're not going to see it. So that's different. and I don't, and I didn't, and I didn't at first. But um, it, so obviously in the beginning, from what she's talking about, probably is when I was always getting very angry over situations when people would say something about him. But oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I do understand now, though, hun. I do. It it just takes time, you know. Not everything just clicks. In your mind, uh, it doesn't work like that right. in your so it's just a lesson that sorry, I learned. Not to you. Go ahead, Dana. Yeah, I just want to tell you, and to take your time, take your time. You're in no rush. You are just a baby. You've got your time. You've got your whole life ahead of you. Hey, Dana. I'm 27. No... Am I still a baby? Well, hold on. Let's find out a little bit about Dana first. <laughs> Dana, how old yes. are you? Where are you calling from? And and, and uh, I'm fascinated oh, that you're a fan crazy. of the show. Go ahead. I yeah, I'm like I'm 49. My birthday's in four more days. Um, Happy birthday! So I mean, I've lived a life, a lot. And I mean, I've been hurt a lot. She's and clearly calling I from Canada. I have been blinded with that by love, and I believe she loves him so much that sometimes men have a way to work their little ways back into your life, and then three <laughs> or four months later, bam, it's another surprise. I think everybody's worried later, about that. I think everybody's worried he's about to work his way back in my life. <laughs> But you know what? It's, well, it's and I hard. know it's not that because you are judge. You're judge of your life. All I want to tell you is make sure. And then it's like God's telling me to tell you to um, take your time. Do you for a minute. You've never actually done you. You need to do you That's interesting, huh? for at least like a year 
and and see where yeah. Amber is. Well, see she, what she, Amber wants. She did in prison for a couple of years. You did. Her, <laughs> well, did outside her. of prison, out, when I got out of prison, actually, I was um, alone for a year and a half. Yeah. Um, I was single for a year and a half, and I dated a couple times, but um, I never got in a relationship until Matthew. Um, so I did live that life, and I'm living that life right now. I'm finding myself again, which was something that I really needed to do. And I know exactly what you're saying. Um, but I want to tell you and everybody that the millions actually that think just like you're, um, that I am living my life. I'm alone. I'm trying to get my stuff in line. I'm just focusing on my businesses and trying to make sure that I'm good in the future. And, um, you know, so I don't want you guys to worry about it. Um, and, all I got to say is, you know, I, I take um, all, you know, criticism, good and bad, and I, I'll listen to you. Um, and, and I do understand what you're saying, though. I really do. You're not the first, obviously, to say it. And I know you know that if you follow me. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure you hear a bit of But that, I so. do. I love, I love that uh, people care enough to contact me and, and, and say things like this because, um, it just shows there's there's great people out there that really do care in a sense, even if they don't know you. To, to and that, I'm the same way. To that point, uh, producer Susan, uh, we we can't see the Facebook comments or anybody any, saying anything they want to talk to. All about. positive. Oh, yeah. Well, Is it really? I can't, oh. I can't hear Susan. They're all very positive. Um, you've grown so much and have overcome many obstacles. You're awesome and have definitely earned my respect. Tell the Continue name of the. Grow. Tell the name oh. of That's Allison Rivers. Yeah. And um, thank you, Allison. Continue and grow and be the amazing mom that you are. Dr. Drew, you're an awesome man. Had a, already had. Uh, uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Anyways, no, huge, but, penis, <laughs> <dude>. huge penis. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> no, but, I mean, there's a. Few, I don't want to know that. Don't no. say oh, that. Oh, sorry. No, a few I've people are like, oh, no, don't let him manipulate you. And, you know, they're giving you advice. But when you, you can go to the live feed and you can read all these comments, but they're all pretty positive. And I think there were a few naysayers and then the, the, the crowd knocked them down. So. <laughs> <laughs> those are my fans listen there it's it's an army i swear like if i on my social media if anybody says anything before i block them it's like there's an army they and there was one person they made up something called hashtag amber's army <laughs> it sounds like amber's army <laughs> and, yeah and, and they do they'll, they'll shut them down real quick and and i just block them afterwards um if i'm not ranting one or what two you should times, do, I, which I have. What you should do is if someone gives you shit, you should blast them out and call it an Amber Alert. Oh, <laughs> there, it is. oh. there it is. I'm not sure I would. Good job. But you know what? Hashtag Amber Alert. Amber Alert. A lot of states don't have Amber Alerts like we do here in oh, California. Yeah. So people have but, no idea what I'm talking so, about. Then, but but um, Amber, how are you with the with the other girls now? What's what's going on with everybody? I am just fine with the other girls. I'm even fine with Farah. Like, I have no... That stuff happened so long ago that I don't think people get how long ago it was, you right. know? And, and I, um, what, what I... Which, I just which, the other everybody... Thing, well, the other thing they don't get is that you guys are, like, in this capsule <laughs> together. You know what I mean? That, that no uh, one knows what this is. This experience has been more than the four of you together. And so I, I've always for a thought long it was, time. yeah, I always thought it was important for you guys to stay connected. I've noticed that uh, Kaylin's getting the, the spending time with you guys too. You, you're getting still close with her. Oh yeah, yeah. That's from the heat. Kaylin's team been close. Kaylin's been too. close though. I mean, I I like all of the everybody on the team on franchise. I really do. I I just hope the best for them. I think um, my the way that I think about everybody is different compared to probably a year or so ago. Um, today I'm just. I'm just kind of in the, I don't know if it's a mommy mode where I'm just like, I just want everybody to be happy. <laughs> you know, even, even people who talk crap about me, I just want everybody to be happy and move forward and just be the woman that they're supposed to be. How, honestly, how, because how are, I'm doing. Yeah, you seem great. How, uh, how are you and Gary doing? We're doing so good. Yeah. We're, I'm doing, I'm co, I'm co-parenting good. I'm not going to be very good for reality television for a um, after this, no drama because I, I'm not going to have as much drama. Oh, believe me, there's plenty of drama. I can't say that. I I swear to God, it follows me, or I just I bring it upon myself. Uh -huh. I swear. Uh -huh. But um, I can say that me and Gary, though, we're very good. We're co-parenting amazingly. Me and Christina, his wife, is amazing. Um, I can't wait for people to see the next season. I don't know if I was supposed to say that, but I did, so they'll get over it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, but you know, I, I, 
I just, I think getting older, I'm thinking differently um, than before. And I just don't care about the drama as much, but I still have my issues with people who, um, who talk a lot of crap. <laughs> yeah, but I also, but, uh, I do think that like you, you alluded to before, you said, maybe I'm just in mommy mode. I, I, I think you're getting older. You're 27 years yeah. old. You realize even if I'm upset at this person for saying the things that they do and they don't even know me, that's a human being on the other end and they have their own issues and they have their own yeah. life and they have their own struggles too. And that is just, that's another reason why just in the same way that people can't hold you girls accountable for decisions you made when you were 16, 17 years old. People cannot at all look down on a 18, 19 year old girl on TV, on MTV at the center of a ton of controversy. When I was 19, I flew off the handle be, you know, for for nonsense. Yeah. If I had millions of people trying to tell me how to live my life, it would be I would be suicidal. Yeah. I, I don't, you know. So I, I in the you're which now, I was right, right, and understandably, I just it, it, people somehow they say, well, we can cut her some slack because she was 17, but then they don't apply that to how you yeah. girls would react when you're at the center of like massive amounts of controversy no, 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 on they, TV. They treat you like a cartoon character right. or something. Yeah. Pretty much. Human. Pretty much. I mean, I don't think they understand the depth of what they're saying. Um, a lot. And it's a lot of young people, you know, because teen mom attracts a lot of young people as well. Um, they're, and it's a, it's a lesson learned, I think on my end to just um, when I see things like that, I have to, just move forward. I, I did a couple rants on Instagram and things like that. I got a lot of crap for it, but um, it was real. And I just can't handle the pettiness anymore when it comes to people in the show. Um, but other than that, I mean, I feel that the way that I react to certain situations is way different than before. Um, and I do think it has something to do with me getting older and um, becoming the person that I am, you know, running my businesses and things like that. I just, um, I've been more responsible for things. So I've just, uh, changed my mindset Susan, on, on how I live. Hang on. Susan's got so, something from Facebook. We get a lot of ma- emails and tweet tweets about this, but somebody said, Danielle said, why don't you call her and the other teen moms out on their deplorable behavior and the drug use? Who? The viewers see. I guess Who? they were, they were really complaining about drug use Somebody was talking about Xanax and somebody was drinking. Who? No, you know what? They, they, they again, they don't know what they're saying. So, so they're, I don't even know who that is. No, because I, I know I don't it is. Follow I know it is. that, that, that I'll, bull I'll you, crap that I, they write about. Let, let me tell you what it is. It was that there was stuff that we did address. For instance, we talked about when Matt offered, I forget who it was, somebody some Xanax. Remember that whole oh, ordeal? That's what they're talking yeah. about. We addressed that, number one. Number right. two, they're freaking out about Ryan driving intoxicated. Nobody knew that was coming, and when it when they, they intervened uh, no. quickly, as soon as that became apparent, it uh, shocked me. Yeah, it I was, was cr- I cried like I I I don't think I've cried that hard and uh, yeah, yeah. in they're, a while. There and and people are getting treatment that's none of your business. That's up exactly. to that, that's all protected by HIPAA, and they're privileged. In information for their own health care by people. people are doing great yeah a lot of people are doing, doing a lot of stuff that you don't hear about you're here yeah. seeing little snippets of time little ice picks in people's lives and people freak out about it. they freak out about it mm-hmm. uh they, 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 they get mad at me for not being harsher on poor farah who i just feel i feel bad when she gets she is a human being people, yeah i know let me remind I you said it. I, I listen i said character. it yeah. did i not dr drew yeah yeah, yeah. I I said, listen, she's a human being. Everybody deserves to be loved. Yeah. I, even though we had, she was talking all that crap about me. I, she still, I just want her to be happy. I don't think she is. I'm sorry. Let's take That's a, just my well, opinion. Right, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back with more of Amber Portwood. We are proud to welcome a great new sponsor, Integrity Care Card. This is a service that was started by a recovering addict who actually was a patient of Bob's at one time. Integrity Care Card. It's a refillable debit card that lets you provide financial support to someone you love without the risk of misuse. It's a great idea. That's how it works. Simply sign up, you deposit the funds onto the card, share it. Through your Integrity Care Card account, you can keep track of the spending habits and receive real-time spending alerts and block purchases from places like liquor stores, casinos, ATMs, 
people in recovery often need help making responsible choices with their money. So the Integrity Care card is a fantastic way to offer support without denying them the independence they deserve. It's a great parenting technique. Come on now. It's better than cash, better than gift cards. This is a true debit card that can make a real difference in someone's life. I love this idea. So if you or someone you know is supporting a loved one in recovery or trying to structure your financial relationship with, uh, say, a child or something, check out Integrity Care Card. Visit IntegrityCareCard.us. Click the banner on Doctor.com or call 888 888- 216-4680, 888-216-4680, or integritycarecart.us. This is a great idea. It is a great idea. We're back. We're talking to Amber Portwood. Hey, Amber, one of the things that, uh, by the way, our number here is 323-649-8268. If you want to talk to Amber, you get to talk directly to her, all of Amber's army. They, This is your big chance. You can actually, rather than just... Uh, talk to me. Where are you guys? Uh, here comes some, <laughs> somebody's got Alexis in just a second. But I, I want to ask this question. Which is Gary one time, early on, probably mm, season two or something, he, he told me all a lot of the stuff he went through in childhood. And I was really like sort of, wow, it, w- it was intense. And that never has come up. Is, is that something he just isn't comfortable talking about? Or uh, you know what I mean? Have you ever explored that with him or talked to him about that? Yes. Yeah. Um, I know everything about what happened to him as a child and he just, I don't think is comfortable. Okay. Yeah. That, that's I, fine. It's just, it's just that he gets a lot of crap too. And I thought, God, if people really understood who everyone is, they know, they, they don't know, Yeah, they you just know, don't know. Uh, but he hasn't shared it. Yeah. And I think if he did share something, but for, I for think some it, things I think like it'd be that, very it's, powerful. Uh, I think it'd be hard. very powerful if he did. I really do. I think it would help. I think it would be too. Honestly, yeah. I think uh, people would look at him in a different light and understand him a little bit better in yep. some some things. Yep, and and how and how amazing he's doing. By the way, and he and he did. I, I I think I can share this without divulging confidences, which is that he had told me that there was one person that sort of stuck with him and stood up for him and supported him, and it's a great example of how just one relationship with one adult over time can change the outcome for a kid. Um, Gary's yeah. doing great, obviously, you know, and that that he's doing great because of that one person hanging in with him, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Let's uh, go talk to Alexis. Has a question for Amber. Alexis. Alexis. There you are. Hello. Hey there. Hi. Um, I actually was just wondering how Leo was doing with the split up with you and Matt because I know um, on the show you had said you know that she was really close to him and we saw that. So I was just wondering how she was doing with everything. Actually, surprisingly, Leah has been doing great. She um, actually told Gary that she's enjoying her time just with her mom. So, okay, um, I think I think Leah missed that actually, but she still cares for Matt. However, um, she she understands. She doesn't really know that we're a hundred percent right now broken up. Um, yeah, all she really all she really cares about is being here with me and cuddling with Mama and doing stuff with me and. Um, so that's where we're going to keep it at the moment. Um, and I think she's, but she's very smart, you know, she's very smart. So yeah. I think she already knows, but I'm, I'm going to have that conversation with her. I am. I bet she is enjoying, is you know, the one-on-one time with you that she's getting. She is. She really is. And, and, um, you guys are going to be able to see that now, you know, the one-on-one time with just me and her that I'm excited for people to see, because it's funny how it, how she acts when it's just me and her. It's, um, I mean, it's just my mini me, you know, it's, it's nothing but love. So, <laughs> Thanks, uh, Alexis. yeah, thank appreciate you for your call. question. Well, I'm glad she's doing okay. Well, we appreciate yeah, the call, thank Alexis. You. Thank you. Uh, are you guys filming now? We are filming now. We really are. Yeah. Um, we've got a, this is one of our longest seasons yet, Dr. Drew. It's well, it, going to be pretty hardcore. Wh- wh- I know a, that. A, a, why is it you long? And B, explain to people how, how you do I this I can't filming. say. You, you can't say how you, okay, <laughs> explain how you do the filming so people understand when you and I say oh, that you're God. only seeing, you know, ice picks of someone's life. It's not, it's not like cameras are running 24 seven. They're showing you the highlights. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's six. Usually for a regular season for us, it's six to seven months of filming. But for what we're about to do, it's going to be, oh, I'd say nine at the mo- at the least, nine months of filming. Um, we probably get a few days in between um, unless something's really going on that we need more time. 
and and they're very good with that. Um, a few days in between just to relax. And then we're back up to our days of filming and emotions and bringing up all of the stuff that just, you know, the, makes us so happy to talk about. How, how many days <laughs> a week do the camera show up? At what? How often do the camera show up? Yeah, like every, is it like oh, four every, days every two weeks? Every, every week, every few days. Um, now, this season, it's going to be every few days, honestly, yeah. for this season. It's a pretty long season. I've, somebody told yeah. I think Morgan oh. told me what he was going to do. I forgot what it is that you guys are up to, but I remember thinking it sounded interesting. All right. Well, listen, uh, Amber, as always, it's a privilege to talk to you. Beforeverhote.com is the line Be of makeup. Beforeverhote. Hote in, in the uh, Midwestern uh, lexicon. <laughs> H-A-U-T-E. Uh, it's a line of makeup and clothing. Tell people about it before we go. Um, this is my baby, and it's doing amazing. I have sizes small all the way up to 4X for my – because I've been every size, I swear. Um, and I also have my makeup line, Forever Hope makeup line, that's uh, paraben-free, um, vegan. Um, it's amazing quality. I wear it myself. Um, and it's just, it's doing amazing. I hope all women can go on there and find something beautiful for themselves. I know it's really hard. And, uh, you know, I'm running my businesses on the side, and I'm just trying to keep myself busy going through uh, this crazy life. So we you can, can f- watch me on Teen Mom OG and, and see where my journey is going. And uh, the, uh, the the boot camp, the marriage boot camp, is that going to air soon or is that out there? Yeah, uh, marriage boot camp. We just got done filming that not too long ago. Um, that should be out. They told me fall, but they're not quite sure yet. Okay, you can follow um, Instagram. At- but I don't want people. I don't want people watching that too much because I I look crazy on there. Okay, yeah. I'm too angry. Okay. I'm too angry on there. Okay, at real Amber Portland <laughs> Portland one at real Amber Portland one is your Instagram? Is that true? No, real oh, Amber L Portwood one <laughs> underscore underscore. Wait, wait, wait! Do it again. Real Amber. Real Amber L Portwood. One underscore underscore. Okay, and then the <laughs> at Amber Portwood official on Facebook and at Amber L. Portwood. It's verified. Uh, at Amber L. Portwood on Twitter. Just Google her. Yeah, Google her. That's all. So you'll find Just her. Just Google it, guys. <laughs> all right, Amber. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Mike, thank you, Amber. Yeah, it's it's. It, did you watch? Do you watch? Did your wife watch or? I, I dabble. Yeah. I dabble. It's, it's but, in the uh, lexicon. There's no way to avoid yeah, it. It's in no, the, that's, it's that's in the for damn sure. culture. You know what? One thing I will say is, <laughs> is that uh, is there any way to get get alongside people like Dr. Drew? Who, who ta- I mean, I remember when he came back from visiting you in jail. Almost immediately, he was so uh, enthusiastic about the quality of recovery in, in the your jail. jail yeah, in, in jail Indiana. That, and Indiana. That, how it so greatly varies. Well, I, what I said was, let me say it. I said, yeah. God, California blows. It right. sucks here compared to what Indiana offers its its citizens. And, wow. the, and the program, wow. not only the prison itself, the staff, the program was phenomenal. I just think that, you know, in this country, Absolutely. if we're going to talk about the prison system being redemptive and yep. not just a place to dump people when yep. they make mistakes, then recovery has to be right at the top of the Absolutely. things that people need in jail. And it's so great to hear that you had a great experience and that you've been yep. open about how it helps save yes. your life. Uh, I just I would hope that there would be a movement. Uh, and, and that you know, was that was Mike Pence. I think, was right? It? Wasn't he yes, your governor? It was. Yeah, it was. He he funded yeah. it. He he got it funded. That's and something. you know, a lot of people don't like Mike Pence, but however, um, it changed my life. Uh, he, completely. he also and, he also had one of the biggest needle exchange programs. Uh, some some I forget mm-hmm. all the HIV interventions he did, but he was. And very I believe in that. I'm substance. sorry. I, a lot of people don't, but I believe it. No, oh, yeah, it, 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 it works. It works. And it works. He, he 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 sort of turned a. Tra- so a train around there in Indiana where they had one of the highest HIV rates, these horrible outbreaks and things. And he mm-hmm. he had all this intervention and needle exchanges and whatnot and took care of it. It's yeah. a business. Yeah. Anyway, so true. Uh, Amber, again, we'll look for you at all those places I've already said. Uh, those of you on Facebook, uh, hang on. We're, we're not done yet. Uh, YouTube as well. And uh, Mike, thanks for doing another podcast. Here. Oh, it's yes. You are, let's wrap the Amber, honestly, thank you so much again for joining us. And uh, Facebook thank Live you, followers. Guys. Facebook Live followers, stick around for another podcast live with the funny, the beautiful, uh, amazing legs on this woman. Not enough people know. Heather McDonald for Juicy Scoop. Back in five minutes to take all your calls. Hashtag you live. 
Remember, you can find all these podcasts at drdrew.com. The Dr. Drew podcast, the This Life podcast, and the Adam and Drew podcast, which is available five days a week. Find them all on iTunes and rate us five stars. Subscribe and get it first. And if you're really happy, click on the Amazon banner at drdrew.com to help support the show. We'll thank you for it. If you join the email list via drdrew.com slash contact, we'll send you a weekly infusion newsletter with Dr. Drew's News. We're so grateful when you get in touch. We read all your emails and we'll bring you the subject matter you want to hear about. You live.